Hi guys. Man, I have had a busy week. I got those four Adirondack chairs finished. And that was about a three week project. Uh, the first one I really uh, emphasized on getting my templates built just right so that I could uh, mass produce them in the future. But in the meantime, some ladies at church wanted some bluebird boxes. So that's what I did yesterday. I made these bluebird boxes. And they're from the Missouri Department of Conservation Plans. And uh, it is a PDF file that I found online. Recently, I went to their website because in one of my previous bluebird videos, I had a link to the site that gave you not only this uh, plan, but additional plans like the bat house and things like that. Well, I, I clicked on that link and they've evidently revamped their website and it doesn't work. So you might have to do some uh, Googling for the Missouri Department of Conservation and then the actual title is how to build a bluebird house and what I'm going to do in just a few moments well not just now but when I get into the editing room I'm going to take a still photo of this and insert it in the video and run it for about five to eight seconds so that you can pause it and get your camera and take a picture of it off the screen or what have you it's a real easy project in fact a one by six five foot long board and you can make this birdhouse I did make let me go over some modifications mainly because I'm able to cut angles and stuff uh, on this bluebird box when the when the roof comes down they don't angle the front face of the bluebird so it naturally makes a an air vent on my bluebird box I went ahead and extended the angle to the front and even put an angle back here so I did away with this top bar that's supposed to shed the rain from going down in there because I glued it and uh, nailed it across the back with my pneumatic nailer and then when I put when I paint these white that'll be enough to seal it off but this little hole right here is my vent and I put I did that on my uh, router table and on each side I had to be careful which direction I was going but these slots are actually angled like that so when rain comes down it won't run inside the bluebird box it's at, it's at a slight angle and uh, if you look up in there I really uh, created some heat with my bit and I had it smoking like crazy but I went ahead and went for it so I'm sure those bits aren't that expensive and I've had them for 20 years I probably need a new one anyway another modification that I made was they since uh, they have this one little strip going across here and you just slide the lid up in there they drill the hole and you just stick a nail in here and that's what holds it on and I have built them that way and they work but uh, on this particular one I came down on this top piece here I made it just a little bit long when I first made it and uh, I measured down the hole plus about an eighth inch and made my hole and then I came down an inch and cut it off and this very top piece is uh, glued and nailed and this bottom piece has a hinge on it with two screws and you just let me go ahead and undo that for you every year you'll want to uh, clean out clean out your birdhouse but I made this on a lid so when you got this on your post or on the side of a tree or something like that you can get in here instead of 
reaching down and pulling the uh, nest out, all you got to do is drop the front open, and uh, it'll it'll pop out. And it's easy to clean this the old the previous year's nest out. So I think this will work. I made two of them like this. I uh, ran out of hinges, and I. Uh, I lived like 12 miles from the nearest hardware store, so I wasn't going to drive yesterday 24 miles around Tirrett just to get some hinges. But the next time I'm in town, I'm going to drop by the Habitat for Humanity place. They usually have all kinds of cabinet hardware, hinges, and things of that sort. So I'm going to probably Thursday head over there and uh, see what I can find in the hinge department. This one here doesn't have a hinge, so what I did on this one, I just drilled four holes, so there's actually four screws that hold this up. If you're like my wife, you'll probably want one with a hinge because if you start noticing sparrows building their nest, she likes to get out there every day and tear their nest out. Personally, for me, I just like, I get as much joy watching a sparrow fly in and out of these as a bluebird, but my wife's a little bit different. There was one lady at church that wanted one of these, so I went ahead and yesterday, while I, when you have the saw set up for each individual cut, I just made enough for three. So I'll go, uh, I'll give her one next Sunday, and these two here will be my wife, so she can place them around our property here. So that's about it for the day. I'm going to be doing some uh, shop cleanup. I got lots of scrap wood that's probably going to go into the, the woodshed that I use for heat and house. And uh, my next project is going to be building a stand that will hold that brand new spindle, well not brand new, but new to me, the uh, oscillating spindle sander, the rigid model. And then what is new and is new to me was that 13 inch rigid planer that I bought. Can you see me? Woo okay. And I've got this rigid sander sitting over there, which it's kind of hard to get to. And this table here was actually designed to be my assembly station. And it's so full that I, I had to use this little fold-up workbench table with this sheet of plywood. But actually it works, so uh, I'm going to keep it. This is a nice little portable table that's nice because if I want to spray paint stuff, I can take this out in the yard on a day that it's not windy and uh, use it for uh, spray painting lacquer on my projects. So anyway, stick around. We'll have... Uh, I'll let you in on that stand project as I when I get it started. We'll see ya.